There are so many myths out there about the possibility of retirement. They say that the average person to live a comfortable retirement is going to have about $4 million saved and invested. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that's not necessarily true. It's not that you shouldn't save, you absolutely should. It's not that you shouldn't invest, you absolutely should. But you also want to understand that you can take control of your retirement at any time and make a determination of when you will retire by doing one simple thing. Hi, I'm Lorna Rasmussen, and I'm here in Costa Rica to share with you how I ended up here. At the age of 48, we were going through what appeared to be, well, heading for bankruptcy. Um, not that we hadn't worked hard, not that we hadn't tried very hard to make our businesses successful and to save money and to invest money. And we'd done a little bit of that, but the long and the short of it was things beyond our control took over. And I think a lot of people have experienced that this, this year or this past couple of years. So what happened was at the age of 48, I realized that if I didn't do something, dramatically different than what I had been doing, I would more likely have to work until I drew my last breath. That was when, if luck would have it, I discovered something that I want to share with you. And that it isn't about so much how much you yourself put in, but the kind of leverage that you can create in your life financially. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can leverage your money, putting it in investments and whatnot, if you have the money to do that with. I didn't. You can also leverage your time. And you do that by having other people working with you so that it's not just one person. This is what, um, well, it's debatable who said it, but it, it, a very wealthy man said it. He said, I'd rather have the efforts of 100 men than a, the efforts of myself alone. And that's called leverage. And leverage is a, an interesting concept because a lot of people misunderstand it. It does not mean having employees necessarily, but rather being in a relationship with people such that they're working for themselves, they're doing the thing themselves, for themselves, but you have a little piece of the action. The easiest way to describe that would be a, a realtor who um, starts a brokerage and has other realtors out there working in his brokerage, and he gets a tiny piece of everything, all the efforts of the people out there. So that's leveraged income. But the other income that really makes retirement possible is, is residual income. And residual income, we're familiar with um, through books. Uh, an author writes a book, writes it once, and then it gets published over and over again. And rarely, but so there are people who make a lot of money from selling their books. It's, it's not, the vast majority don't, but some do. The other form of residual income that we're all familiar with is music, where the songwriter sings a song or, play, uh, or writes a song and it gets played over and over and over again, and they make residual income from it. Here's what's interesting. There are lots of ways to have residual income. And there are lots of ways to, to combine the two, leveraged income and residual income. And that's what I'm going to be talking about over the next little while. Because I want people to understand the power of it. And I think on, in a negative way, we learned the power or we saw the desire for such income in this past year with COVID or in the couple of years with COVID because what people experienced was suddenly their jobs disappearing or suddenly their income sources drying up. The re restaurateur who couldn't open his restaurant, the bookkeeper who couldn't, uh, or the uh, bookseller who couldn't open her shop. Those are examples of people's businesses just disappearing. Or it might've been you with a job that just suddenly you became redundant and they said, we don't need you anymore because we don't have customers, therefore you don't have a job. So all of these things, um, I think, really underscore the importance of everybody knowing about this. And I want to share with you to kind of illustrate this, a friend of mine who is a coach. And 
she was doing pretty well. She'd been in the coaching industry for many, many years and was had a had a position for herself and she has continued coaching she never stopped but she added one thing because she wanted residual income she added a company that uh, sold things that made sense to her and she thought her clients would like she joined a network marketing company to get that leveraged residual income so that is one way of doing it we'll go into depth in that industry and in, in over the next course of the next couple of of weeks the second way uh, that you can get residual leveraged income is through affiliate marketing and that's where you promote somebody else's class or course or event and everybody that you send they send you some money for it that's called affiliate marketing and there's also online marketing where you sell products and services online so these are some areas that i want to talk about over the next little while i'm going to do it in a variety of different ways i'm going to do some interviews with some people but i'm also going to be sharing with you some of my story because at the age of 48 i thought i'd have to work until i died but now i still work but i work out of choice and that's what i want for you because you deserve it.